Hey, this is an introduction to respiration. Ooh, can you read the title? Oh, yes, you can if I do that. Anyway, you've seen the title now. There it goes. So, um, I think in conversations with uh, various students, uh, I've realised that um, you don't actually know anything about respiration and I've certainly forgotten what you learnt at GCSE. So that's where we're going to start. We're going to start with the sort of word equation, what respiration is for. So, uh, what did you know from GCSE? You learn a word equation for respiration, which went something like this. Glucose plus oxygen gives carbon dioxide and water. And that really tells you very little indeed. It tells you what your start point is, glucose, and it tells you that oxygen is used somewhere in the process and it tells you what your products are, but it doesn't actually tell you what it's for. So, what is respiration for? It is to release the energy from glucose and um, I can't think of any posher words, but put it into a usable form. For cells to use. Now you can release energy from glucose, you can, you know, stick a boiled sweet in a Bunsen burner flame and it'll burn away quite happily and release all its energy as heat. Um, but we need it in a usable form for cells to use. So that usable form is our universal energy currency. And I'm going to switch colours now because this is so important and it is the main thing that students get wrong in exams. So. Respiration makes ATP. That's the whole idea, that you get all of the energy out of the glucose and you use it to make a number of molecules of ATP. Now obviously, we're going to do the sort of, you know, the next bit, as you've seen from your booklet, is all of those respiration pathways. So respiration, amongst other things, is a series of enzyme controlled reactions. And they're the ones that you kind of need to have in your head so that if you're asked something a bit curveball, you get a bit of an odd diagram that you can interpret that. So, there are two main enzymes involved in respiration. So what are they? Let's just deal with those. So, we have two sorts of enzyme that you need to know. One, the main one, I suppose, is a dehydrogenase. And this is the enzyme that when you did the yeast and methyl in blue practical, that's what your write-up should have been out about. So, what does the dehydrogenase do? It removes hydrogen from its substrate. So what are we talking about in terms of substrates is it's removing hydrogen from triose phosphate, for example, in glycolysis. It's removing, as it's so triose phosphate is the substrate, D 
dehydrogenase is removing the hydrogen from it. Uh, if you're looking at pyruvate going to acetyl, there's a dehydrogenation reaction in that case. Pyruvate is the substrate and it's losing its hydrogen. And of course removal of hydrogen is a reaction type called oxidation. So removal of hydrogen is oxidation, so it's oxidising the substrate. And we'll get on to the reduction bit uh, of that reaction shortly. So our other sort of enzyme that's involved in this series of reactions are decarboxylase enzymes. And these remove carbon dioxide. And of course we've got a clear link there to the production of carbon dioxide in respiration. And so when you did the experiment with the syringe full of yeast and, uh, and glucose and you put it under water and you counted the bubbles coming off, that gas was carbon dioxide and you should have been writing in your write-up about decarboxylase enzymes. Now just to sort of, you know, add interest to the whole topic. There are some coenzymes involved. So what does a coenzyme does do? So these are uh, these aid enzyme action in some way. So we've got Coenzyme A, nice easy one to remember, and its job is to help the acetyl enter Krebs cycle. Now, I know that if you're watching this as an introduction, you don't know what Krebs cycle is, there will be another video on what these things do. You might as well get a sort of an overview of what it's all about. And then we've got uh, a coenzyme called NAD. Now, dehydrogenase is removing hydrogen and NAD carries that hydrogen. Where does it carry it to? It carries it from where it has been removed from the substrate to the electron transport chain. And just as our removal of hydrogen is oxidation, NAD when it picks up the hydrogen is reduced. So as it goes from NAD plus hydrogen to NADH what we would call that is reduced NAD. The NAD is carry is now gained the hydrogen. And we've got FAD as well. And that's its job is also FAD carries hydrogen to the electron transfer chain. So again, it's helping, these two are helping dehydrogenases. How are they helping? The dehydrogenase takes the hydrogen away from the substrate and the coenzyme carries it away. So what else do we know about respiration from our core, we know that aerobic respiration happens in mitochondria. So again, you need to probably go back and re-familiarise yourself with mitochondrial structure. 
before you make a start on this.